Hello, Scorpio. Thank you very much for tuning in to this week's read. For the main part of the read, I'm using the Cosmic Tarot by Tilly Walden. Tilly Walden's at the top there. Uh, website is liminal11.com. Feel free to freeze frame on that if you want to check that out. Of course, if I can keep it on screen. Okay, support of Oracle Cards. A deck I like to use a lot, Energy Oracle Cards by Sandra Ann Taylor. It's a website in the back of the book, hayhouseradio.com. Feel free to check that out. I believe if you take out the word radio, uh, it'll take you to the main site. Um, but if you check out that website, I'm guessing it'll take you to other options too. I haven't been on there that I can recall. So feel free to check that out or just search up Sandra Ann Taylor and Energy Oracle Cards. You should find something of interest that way too. Okay, what do we have for Scorpio? I'm all excited. Why am I, I am all excited for y'all. Don't even know. I don't even know, but I'm just like, I'm already feeling like all excited. Um, so yeah, because you're not afraid of a fight. <laughs> okay. Um, your cards are literally all good. You're going towards a, a, an issue, but your cards are all like, yeah, I got that. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm got, I got it. Um... And I've known some Scorpios that really don't like confrontation. I have known a couple. Um, they don't really care for it. But when push comes to shove, they just handle it and they move forward. Um, they just do what they got to do. You got the Nine of Cups starting off in the sense of like, I know what I'm doing and I'm good with myself. If you don't want to help me out, that's fine. I'm self-sufficient. I got this down. Um, I do have this need for other people to kind of fall in line a little bit more with the Emperor card. This is showing me this isn't what's working, though. Um, hmm, this is interesting. You know something is going on, and you want to call it out. This may not be the best time to do that. It's almost like instead of calling something out, maybe setting it up so other people just find it out on their own. It's kind of like, um, instead of people saying, you know what, okay, this is the example I'm getting and it sucks, but it's what I'm getting. Um, when a couple people are in a relationship and it's a monogamous relationship, they've made it quite public that it's supposed to be a monogamous relationship. And you find out well, one of them is not monogamous. So because the other one is a good friend of yours, you're like, well, if it was me, I'd want to know the truth. So you let them know. And then they have denial and all this other stuff, and it's not true, and you're jealous and evil, and blah, 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 blah. Until, you know, after a while, the truth does finally come out, and then there's, there's you know, some fallout from that. It's not fair, but people get, when especially in love relationships, people get very caught up in stuff, right? Instead of bringing forth the truth, I've seen that. <laughs> You know where this is happening, you know what's going on, you just kind of let them see it for themselves. Maybe you say, hey, meet me here, and we'll do this. And then you, while they're waiting for you, they see their significant other hanging out with somebody else, and they realize, well, wait a minute, that's a little something I didn't like. And then when they see it for themselves, they can handle it on their own terms, and maybe that's better. Instead of, like, that might be, an, I don't know, I'm more of a, like, I don't know. That happens. I mean, I don't know. You tell somebody the truth, they don't want to hear it, and then it kind of backlashes against you. Because I see this coming in, too. Um, the Queen of Swords, and I feel like the Empress coming in, is kind of like, they don't just believe it, they need to see the proof. So if you're just telling them something, no matter how much they believe in you, they're going to kind of question you. Well, I think you saw something you didn't see, or like I think you're confused about what you saw, or this, that, and the other thing. They're going to try to talk in circles. What's not working for them is the Empress. They don't really link up with it. They just kind of see like, well, I know you think that's the truth, but I don't think that's the truth. Something like that. Um, it's a version of denial. Denial is very rampant. We all have our moment with it. I'm sorry, but in this world... Every single one of us, at some time or another, maybe sometimes shorter than others, but we all have our turn with the, the with the denial thing. We all have our turn, and usually more than one, <laughs> more than one turn. Um, so I feel like they don't want to see, because especially with this card, I'm seeing these eyes in the background above the queen's head, 
And I get like this, like, I don't want to hear that. That is not true energy going on there. I don't want to hear that. Um, as if, like, if I don't hear it, it's not really happening. It's a version of denial, you know? We all have it from time to time. Now, the thing is, they will come to the truth at some point, and they will see that you're right, because you end up with the King of Swords, and these two energies match. But it's kind of like, I'm noticing there's a lot of blood on her clothes. Kind of like, you know... I didn't want to see it when it was happening, but I do see that it's the truth. And at some point they will deal with the truth because I see success coming their way from this. It's kind of like, I feel like this is better for them to see it themselves because they don't want to. The Five of Pentacles on this one is very interesting because it's kind of like left on the outside is normal Five of Pentacles. But it's kind of like trying to see what they want to see versus not being able to reach what they want to reach. Um, and also thinking that these are connected to the tree, and you notice that three of them are, are not. So it's kind of like not seeing it for what it really is, not able to reach what they really want to reach. It's kind of like looking at this tree, thinking these things are connected to the tree, but maybe those are open spots in the tree, and they're seeing something something from behind it. It's an optical illusion. What they want, what they really want to believe is there is an optical illusion. When they see what truly is there, then they can make headway with it. They have to come forward on their own terms. Um... Because I see when it does come together, what we want is we want them to see their own way of handling it. Show them the truth. Find a way to show them the truth where they can just handle it the way they need to. This is their storm. Okay, this makes more sense why it wasn't really... Like, it's not... It, the storm is not your storm. And they have to figure out how to handle it. Judgment will go in their favor. In some way, judgment will go in their favor. Maybe this is something they needed to see. Maybe it was just time to see it. And maybe the timing is right for them to get the best benefit out of it. Sometimes we have people who screw us over. But the thing is, the truth comes forward when we're ready to not only deal with it, but maybe heal that pattern. Because maybe, it seems like a lot of us, we have a pattern of like pulling in the wrong people and just constantly do it, doing it. And then the right person shows us something. And then we start realizing, oh my gosh, I've, I've had this type of person in my life over and over again. What is going on here? Why is this happening? And they're coming to a point with judgment in their favor where it's time for them to see it at this point in this way so they can recognize it for the pattern that it is. It's kind of like, do, do we deserve to be treated like crap? No. But are we drawn to people who treat us like crap? That's the question. Because I feel like there's a lot of us who do this. We're just like, oh, are you treating me less than I should be treated? Well, that feels right. <laughs> so let me go with that. And like this is coming to that point where they're realizing, wait, I'm, I'm accepting a behavior that I think is good. Most people don't like that behavior with this person, and I'm starting to realize I shouldn't have either. And now they're seeing it differently, and they're kind of like, I need to revisit how I'm you know, connecting to people, what I'm allowing in my life, and why do I think that's good when it's clearly not. Um, it's almost like when you tolerate somebody with a bad attitude in your life, and you're like, oh, they're just a little sassy. And other people are like, no, they're a jerk. They're not sassy. They're a jerk. And like, no, they're just they're just a little spicy with their language. They're just funny. And they're like, and other people are like, no, they're not funny. They're just rude. Um, you're seeing it different. They're, they're going to see it differently later. This is going to help them see things in a better light. Just be careful how you bring it forward. You want them to see the proof for themselves. It may seem like it's the more brutal way to do it, but it's it's instead of them taking the long way and dragging you down those steps with them, it's kind of just letting them see it for themselves and then on their own terms, in their own way, dealing with it when they need to. Because um, I do see this successfully coming back. I see, you know, you can only give them so much and you can show them support, but you got to let them handle it on their own. I feel like you will support this energy, but the thing is keep them in control of it so they can hash it out, work it out, and not repeat it again with somebody else. Because ultimately, they have to be in the power position to make this happen. That's the magician. Is there anything with the magician that you can actually help them move forward? Empower them with that magician card? Because they have to be in control of it. And I feel like that's what you want. Slow and steady wins the race is kind of what I'm getting. It's the temperance card, and I get the six of pentacles. They're going to have to sort it out. They're going to have to take slow steps forward. The temperance card, in my opinion, is a constantly moving card. But it does a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, when, when there's some resistance, they let it be. They go do something else. When that resistance kind of backs off, they go back and they do more. It's kind of like uh, if you think of a lasagna pan that sat out a little bit too long and it's got some hard cheese on it and some stained things like stuck on. You go, you fill it with some water, some soap. 
you let it sit there, like you come back in an hour, you scrub a little more, you let it sit there, you go back, you scrub a little more. Hopefully it doesn't take too, too long. <laughs> but you know, they work on it in pieces. Get While you're waiting for that, you know, I'm going to clean up the table. You know, I'm going to start that pan, get it all going, do some of the table, clean some of that up, go do some of this, get some of the laundry done, get some of the linens together, come back, do more of the pan. You know, it keeps moving. It does little bit by little bit. That's kind of the energy they're going to go for. They don't have to solve everything in one fell swoop. Just work on it a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit there. They'll be fine. Uh, balancing it out. Um, this is also the type of problem. It's not a simple fix. It's it's not like you can just go, well, that person was a jerk. I obviously just don't want to be around jerks anymore. It's not that simple because I feel like we all have things we put up with. And like it depends on what we're dealing with. People are so many shapes and flavors that like some people are a little bit rough on the edges, but deep down they're good and they do the right thing and they're malleable and they kind of learn as they go. There's other people who are rough on the edges and they're just not good deep down. They're just not, I'm one. I I have to I just I don't think that everybody you just give them a chance and they'll do the right thing. I feel like some people are just looking for their moment to be a jerk and that's just who they are. It's realizing who those people are, connecting to that, realizing, wait a minute, I feel like that's comfortable to me. Why is that comfortable to me? Did I have a, a friend, a sibling, or a parent, or a grandparent, or who knows what, a teacher that I grew up with, and I thought that was a good thing because of the way they treated me, and then it turns out that's actually really not good. And they have to learn that in pieces, and they have to come to it on their own terms. So slow and steady wins the race. We don't want them running ahead thinking they fixed something that they didn't. It's going to take some time to really work it out, really let it soak in, kind of like the analogy of the lasagna pan. Again, it's going to take them a while to really sort out, like, it's not just simple, like, they were a jerk, I should have known that, and just not gone that direction. What about that person, that personality, the way they treated them, felt good, and why? Did they expect that? Did they still expect that? Was it a combination of events? Uh, was it not just the way they treated them, but did this person kind of pursue them and expect them to do things for them, and they just kind of started doing that? Did this person do nice things, nice things for them, and kind of suck them in and make them feel like they were safe, when in truth they were doing these nice things to get more from them in the long run? Stuff like that. It's going to take them some time to really work this out, see it out, feel it out, do what they need to do. Uh, I see you taking your time and just being supportive, but realize it's going to be a process. This might be a thing where this person tells you, oh, I really miss this person. And instead of saying, don't miss that person, you don't want to say that, ironically. You want to see, like, well, what about them do you miss? And, you know, helping them go through the emotions, like, and did that always go well? This, well, they used to do this for me. Oh, were they doing that when you broke up? Well, no. Or, you know, how long did they do that for? Seeing things for more of the truth. Or, like, they saw something, or they seen something in more of a pleasant light than it actually existed and kind of like helping them work through it in that sense like instead of saying well don't miss them they were a jerk say well what do you miss about them like what did they do how did they treat you did it stay that way or did it change over time stuff like that are we good i think we're there i'm gonna shut this down here i hope that helps thank you for watching if you'd like a direct reading from me shoot me an email James for Astral at gmail.com. That's James the number four, Astral at gmail.com. If you're interested in the donation information, that's below. Same email. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.